Hi guys, this is What Is This Weapon and I'm Jonathan Ferguson. So, we have an MP5, that much is clear. Pretty, pretty ordinary in most respects. Heckler & Koch, MP5, pretty famous firearm. This is the fixed buttstock version, so A2, loosely. And it's the latest style of trigger housing, or trigger group, or lower receiver, whatever you like to call it. This happens to have two round burst, single shot, and safe. Uh, not that it wouldn't necessarily have that. This is an interchangeable part. And in fact, where we're going with this, that's not the trigger pack that was installed. But we're coming to the to the origin of this in a moment. The real obvious elephant in the room is this, the magazine. Obviously, it's a weird color. It's straight, but the early MP5 magazines were straight. This isn't an early MP5, though. We have markings on here that are a bit of a giveaway. Um, both addresses for H and K, Germany uh, and Sterling, Virginia, in the United States, they're both represented on the magazine, which is unusual. And below that, for law enforcement slash government use only, with a date there of, uh, I think it's October 1994. Unusual. Law enforcement is an important aspect of this. And then the other key feature is this little panel to the, to the left that says 40 S and W, Smith and Wesson, and 10 millimeter auto. And I'm sure by now, those of you who have ever come across this know exactly what this is. This is the MP5 slash 10. It's not the 40 Smith and Wesson version, it's the 10 millimeter version, but they both use the same magazine. Uh, it's not surprising, given the history of 10 mil and 40 Smith & Wesson. The 40 Smith & Wesson is a reduced power variant of the 10 mm auto cartridge. So this is in the original 10 mm 10 mm is best millimeter, as people like to say. Uh, <laughs> 10 by 25, so 10 mm diameter projectile, 25 mm cartridge case. So frame of reference, 9 mm Luger or Parabellum. The case length, of course, there is 19 millimeters. This is 25 millimeters, so it's a long cartridge. 10 millimeters is obviously one more than nine millimeters, so it's, a, it's still a relatively wide bullet as well. Proportionately longer and heavier too. This is all about stopping power. So the MP510 um, was developed in 1991, and it's very much for a US law enforcement requirement, specifically the FBI. So the 40 came uh, a little bit later, I gather, but the development process was begun with 10 mil auto to turn that, that already iconic 9mm submachine gun into something in theory more powerful. Yeah, well, 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 we'll see. Well, we did see, in fact. Um, the other feature of the magazine is that little black tab there. That's the follower. That's indicative to those of you who... who are in the know, um, and probably not to anyone else, as to what the other feature that's that's important about this particular firearm. Because the FBI specified, they liked the MP5, but they specified uh, a number of features. One was the caliber, 10 millimeter. This came out of, originally, a study following a number of, well, at least two, I think, gunfights where things didn't quite go according to plan. Famously, the 1986 Miami uh, shootout uh, involving the FBI sort of arguably the wrong lessons were learned initially and they settled on 10 millimeter as, as a, a more potent, more penetrative, more powerful stopping round. What, what the Victorians would have called a man stopper. Um, and spoiler alert, they gave up on it, went back to nine millimeter later on, but not before they went to 40 Smith & Wesson. Now, intriguingly, this thing didn't come about, wasn't adopted, I should say. Development began in 91, but it wasn't adopted until 1994 after, I believe, the FBI had already moved away from 10 millimeter in its handguns. So there was something about the 10 millimeter cartridge and this platform that made it worth hanging on to for, for a number of years, at least. Now, what, what I've just said is reinforced by the visibly larger magazine well. We'll compare this to a nine millimeter gun in a moment, but just to show you how I think if, you, if you're used to looking at MP5s, you immediately say, well, it's wider in this direction. It's also wider in this direction. Of course, they've got to fit this much larger magazine for the much larger cartridge into the gun. 
So this does require a different stamping, a different pressing to, to, to stamp flat and then bend into a U shape to create the basis of this firearm. That's how this thing is made. It does require a different, uh, tool, different tooling to achieve that because although the diameter of these two portions is the same as a 9mm gun, the magazine housing is substantially larger in all directions. It's marked Cal 10mm dash auto for obvious reasons, so that you don't mistake it. Well, certainly by this time, by the time this one was made, this one dates, this one dates to 1998. By then, you definitely want to differentiate it from any 40 Smith and Wesson MP5s um, floating around. So its caliber is marked on the on the magazine well, but that's standard. Uh, MP5s always have the caliber marked on them anyway. It is, however, missing its second magazine release system or arguably it's first, since the design, um, this loose roller delayed design came out with, this is the primary magazine catch, or I guess it would be uh, on this side, and then that would be the back side. We'll show you in the overhead. And then the secondary catch that became the primary for literally everyone that uses it is a paddle release. That has changed. So, so we've deleted the push button. So in a normal MP5, the paddle just actuates the push button because it's a, it's a second, it's an afterthought to the design, essentially. And it was deleted from the civilian versions as well, for reasons. In this case, they have replaced the whole mechanism with a straightforward AK or FAL style paddle. So that's simplified. It's made larger as well with a texture for your thumb so it doesn't slip off if your thumbs are sweaty or whatever. So it's actually an improvement there, for sure, I would say. Um, literally no one uses the press push button magazine release that I know of. We have an enlarged ejection opening. And then the, the sort of hidden bonus feature that was demanded by the FBI is this catch here. This is a magazine hold open device. So that tab that was on the magazine is on the magazine sticks up when the magazine is empty and engages the hold open device. So if you have live or inert rounds, you can demonstrate that. What I'll, what I'll do here is, and you can just about do this if you have long enough fingers and thumbs, we pull the cocking handle back as normal, but then we flip down the catch with our thumb and that's it holding open there. On the manual hold open catch, we can then leave our cocking, leave, uh, handle where it is, or we can return it forward. Instinctively, I, I wanted to, ret to return it forward. And we can see that's locked open. And th we know that without flipping the gun over to check. Well, hopefully, because we know, because we've just done it. But if it's locked open on an empty magazine, so let's put that in. We just fired a magazine of 10 millimeter rounds. We're feeling a bit tired. <laughs> and our magazine catch is there. We replace the magazine. I'll just remove it again. And we just slap the hold open catch. It's very much like the AR-15, and that's not a coincidence, I don't think. This is this is trying to ape an important feature, many would say, of the AR-15. It's the only MP5, and I think the only um, roller-delayed HK variant ever to bother to have one. H and K were very resistant, seemingly, to, to incorporating that. I mean, this is a very slick design. It adds essentially no serious weight to the gun at all doesn't get in the way, uh, isn't a problem in, in any way that I can think of, doesn't even get in the way of a sliding stock. So the FBI, as far as I can tell, did adopt um, only the sliding stock version, the A3. So ours, ours differs from the FBI version in two ways. One, it doesn't have the full auto setting on the, on the trigger pack. Two, it's the fixed stock version. And I haven't seen any FBI photos or footage with the A2 butt stock. They may have bought some. And if they didn't, they could just swap them over if they wanted to. But the sliding stock offers a lot of advantages for, specifically this is, by the way, the HRT, the Hostage Rescue Team. Um, they, I believe, were the only unit within the FBI to have this requirement and to use these guns. Which they did until, as far as I can tell, round about 2002. There's a very interesting uh, TV news style documentary done on the Hostage Rescue Team from 2001. And it looks like by the end of the following year, they had moved away from these. There are markings on the gun itself other than the 10 mil, and they're on the top as usual. So we have HK, of course. 
we have MP5 slash 10, of course. Serial number, pretty low in the, in the 3000 range. And then we have proof marks, and in the middle, the very handy HK date code of KI that tells us that this gun is from 1998. Okay, quick comparison with the classic flavor MP5 here. This happens to be an ex-UK police model, so it's got semi-auto only on here. Um, so ignore that, I guess. Uh, notice here that there's a dimple as well on the 9mm magazine well to accommodate this curve here, this channel here. That's absent from the 10mm. It's another minor feature. The ejection opening, you can see, comes all the way up to in line with these lugs here on the 10mm and is a good 2mm shy of it on the, M on the uh, ordinary MP5. So it's taller. Uh, and we have, so we have um, obviously the, the muzzle, the magazine, the magazine housing. And on the other side, we also notice we're missing the, the HK sling clip on the 10mm. The FBI clearly weren't interested in this additional piece of rivet riveted on spring steel. So that's absent. We got the magazine catch, the second magazine catch missing, as noted. And that's kind of it for the outside. There are a couple of differences on the inside that we should very quickly look at. Now, right away, that's a little bit weird. So the 10 mil gun does not have the spring sort of temporarily attached to the back of the, of the bolt group, as you would normally see on the MP5. So it's missing the insert in here that normally retains this as a single unit. I don't know why that's missing. I'm not sure why the FBI would specify that, but on the 10 mil gun, and presumably the 40 cal, they're two separate units. Unattached, attached on the 9 mil, and then a bit more critically than that, I suppose, is the bolt face. Now the, the actual bolt itself, we'll pop that out as well. This one's clearly not been cleaned when it was, uh, Donated. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Some authentic police uh, carbon there. You'll see that the bolt itself is, the proportions are slightly different, actually, but it's the same width and height. So it's, they haven't substantially changed the shape of the bolt. They've increased the recess size for the larger case head. Of course they have. You have it's a bigger cartridge. It needs a bigger recess to support it. The other changes, so we have the, the other change, the only significant change is the ejector channel. So on the normal MP5, it runs underneath, like, a lot of, like on a lot of guns, and it kicks the case out at that point. On the 10 millimeter gun, it actually has to run along the side. So there's more metal cut away here. Can you see there's a, there's a ridge here on the 9 mil where, where my right hand is, and there's no ridge on the left hand where the 10 mil gun is. And if we turn it on its side, straight channel here and here for the, for the 9 mil, a slightly more convoluted channel bringing the ejector out here on the 10 mil. Why? Well, we briefly look at the the ejector on the 10 mil gun is massive so on the 9 mil it's a simple a simple blade so where my right thumb is it's just a blade sticking up and that runs underneath in the bolt and where my left thumb is much well, it's not necessarily that much more substantial, but it goes, it's much a, a much longer piece of metal and it's bent over. So it has a much wider sort of bearing surface to kick out that case. And that's why the shape, the bolt is shaped differently. So it, it's just a sort of engineering way to accommodate this different ejector. This different ejector is the minor nerdy difference really between the two guns. So this had a, a relatively short service life. Um, 1994 to maybe 2002, maybe a little bit longer than that. There's usually a lag time where things stay in the armory and are sort of phased out. So I don't know when they were finally abandoned by the FBI HRT. No significant sales beyond that that I'm aware of. Um, 
now this coincided with the shift to 556 carbines ar-15s typically um, g36 of course uk police mainly switched over to that now they never got their hands on the 10 mil mp5 but the overall trend was toward rifle caliber weapons so this thing was never going to last that long um it, it was a little bit too sort of boutique <laughs> um in, in terms of the caliber but even if even if they had stuck with nine mil mp5s they would have been phased out about the same time so it came in late so sort of last in first out kind of situation now for me this has a fairly strong pop culture legacy in that so this gun's made in 1998 um we had the original rainbow six novel and game i think came out the same year as that and that was one of these might be the first game novel tie-in that i was aware of anyway i got both pretty soon after they came out and you read in clancy talking about uh, tom clancy about an mp10 now that's weird because the gun was already in service with the fbi for four years or something i don't know when he started writing the novel the name mp5 slash 10 was already in existence so that was a straight up cock up by tom clancy unfortunately now, something people miss, uh, the few people that care, <laughs> including me, um, is that in the novel Rainbow Six, the MP10, the fictional MP10, is an SD. So it's an integral silenced MP5 in 10 millimeter. So the cylindrical handguard, the great big suppressor sticking out the front, very, very quiet. Um, well, that was never made. So it's, it's, the name is incorrect, and it would be MP10 SD, even if it was a real thing. And there is no MP5 slash 10 SD. So um, the gun in the Rainbow Six book was fictional. Now the game didn't include it. So someone didn't, didn't send a memo or didn't read a memo. And the game that was supposed to come out the same time as the, as the book and reflect the story of the book and all of that. Well, the story was pretty bare bones anyway. And the MP5s in the game, well, they were, they were like your standard starting weapon. There was no 10 millimeter MP5 in the first game. Rogue Spear comes along a couple of years later and the MP510, the real MP510, looking as it should, not suppressed, with the correct designation, shows up there. And then again in uh, Raven Shield, the third Rainbow Six game. So there's this sort of tenuous connection with the games, really, because didn't, they didn't fully embrace the 10mm thing. But it's pretty clear that Tom Clancy regarded this as the state of the art for um, shooting terrorists, essentially. Um, which I guess for a very brief, brief period of time you could regard it as. But rifle calibre is where, is where it was going and rifle calibre is where it has gone. Um, very, very few submachine guns in use for that, that purpose and no 10mm submachine guns in service at the moment that I'm aware of. Thanks for watching, guys. Do remember to like and subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. But also check out our website. Um, it has recently been revamped, so see what you can find on there, including details of our new temporary exhibition, which is opening next month. So do keep an eye out for that. So that's going to be a selection of especially decorated firearms. So everything from um, very beautiful flintlock arms uh, through to a gold-plated Kalashnikov from you can possibly guess where that's from. So in other words, cross period, uh, it's, but it's all about the guns. So if you're enjoying this series, you're definitely going to enjoy that exhibition. So do come and check that out. As I say, check the website for details on that as we get nearer to the time. But again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next week.